I would have probably rather been outside today. It was awful nice for a change. But sitting out in the backyard, and I remembered I had something I had to do. <laughs> this is it. <clears throat> in uh, the end of the summer, I hate to say that, on August 3rd, it's funny, that's the day I actually started in practice, August 3rd. <clears throat> Probably three decades ago. <clears throat> you know, talking about cancer prevention, you know, I totaled up the amount of years we have in our family and I hear some families that have had the real cancer monster attack them, and sometimes you just can't fight it genetically, <clears throat> but we have been blessed to have hundreds and hundreds of years of family that has missed this. <clears throat> Me and my family treat ourselves very aggressively. One of the most important things I do is preparing my immune system before this happens. <clears throat> not after it happens, before it happens. <clears throat> so we're going to give you some of the cool tips that the literature supports. That's like I said at the last lecture. October, what month was October? Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Not Breast Cancer Prevention Month. It was Breast Cancer Awareness Month. <clears throat> so there's a lot of things that you start doing now, and if you start them now, it's gonna take you two to three years to put the wind at your back if you started today on cancer prevention. It's not something you do lightly in this toxic society. All right. <clears throat> Dr. Jeff is gonna do a great lecture in, one, uh, in May 11th about blood chemistry. <clears throat> you know, we had an incredible blood panel today that Kelly and I looked at. It was horrible. It was on a five-year-old kid, and we have to go over this tomorrow. And it was completely horrible, and the doctor said it was normal. And it's kind of interesting to watch how topically things are today. I watch all you folks come in, and about to watch these guys that look at a sophisticated blood panel and all they can come up with is you need Lipitor. There's a lot of information on that blood panel that seems to be ignored. <clears throat> Hopefully this will give some insight to that. I have some young folks that have pushed me into the 21st century. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of funny when I started in practice, I think me and Al Gore did develop the internet and I, I'm grateful for his assistance in that. But with the gas prices, transportation, people trying to keep up what they're doing, this website is readily available to save people from driving up to the office. So it's going to be available to the folks. And it's amazing how many countries have actually, we had Spain yesterday, Mexico and Canada, a lot of folks are tracking us down, and it's been kind of humbling to how many hits we've had already. We're just about at four or 500 since uh, Monday. So just people looking for some information, and the lectures will be on there, and things that you can get, and a lot of specials and stuff. And then <clears throat> after these 30 years, I would appreciate if you would pass out some of those cards, let people know that that's available, and. That would be all the payment we'd want for these 30 years of lectures. <clears throat> Next. When I talked about this, when it started to happen, if you remember a few years back, me and my youngest son, we were the first ones, I think, about a year and a half ago to opt out of the scan. We created a stink at the Utah airport and we made him work for it. And the guy tried to tell me, there's hardly any radiation in this thing. And I looked at him and <clears throat> told him in a nice way, before he had my pants off, <laughs> that I don't think you have any clue how much radiation's in this thing. Now, it's 10 times higher than they said it was. 
So to that special government employee that was clogging up the aisle and had to put his gloves on to take care of me and Dylan and the little punishment of the punishing glass box that we were put in, we proudly stood in the glass box and waited for him to glove up. <clears throat> I would encourage you to do the same because now they're trying to find out what actually is going on with that um, scanner. I don't think they have a clue. And right now, if I wanted radiation, I would just stand outside and let the air drift over my head. <clears throat> Ann Coulter was on the news. She plainly said, now it's funny to watch over your life, the Republicans and Democrats turn into the exact same people. There's no difference between either one. I saw Pat Buchanan on TV recently, and what came out of his mouth, I almost fell off the chair compared to what he used to be like and to what he's like now. Me and my parents talked about that at lunch today. So <clears throat> I'm going to tell, tell you something today. I, I told my, diet, my dad and mother I was going to mention this today. <clears throat> in my office, despite what the media tells you, I see a cross-section of the population. And I've just been trying to see what people have said, <clears throat> despite what the media says about the next president. You know who the majority of the people want in my office? Of, of every age group? Trump. <clears throat> the majority, 99. I've had one person, one, say Huckabee. <clears throat> 99 out of 100, just to listen to what they have to say. So Ann Coulter advised us for that. Now this is just a little history of the radiation. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, for some of my alternative listeners, Alex Jones has called this right since the day it happened. You know, I, isn't it funny that all this stuff's off the news right now? You know, we're back to Charlie Sheen and, you know, the important things, the basket, the NCAA brackets, those are very important right now. We don't want to miss those. The president's all tangled up in those. <clears throat> this is the fallout that's going on right now, and that's just scraping the surface. Cesium and fatty tissues, iodine. My entire family's taken iodine. And I knew when you took one look at those reactors, and they tried to tell us how everything's fine, all you had to look is at how blown up those reactors were. And I swear, they weren't looking at the same pictures I was looking at. And that number three reactor is plutonium. Now, plutonium makes the rest of the stuff look like candy. You don't want to mess with plutonium. A dust particle inhaled into your lungs will take you out. A dust particle. And it's not going to take long. Strontium you find in bones, uranium and plutonium, etc. Can I give you a little clue why all this stuff has disappeared from the media? And we're back to idiotic, sensational type reporting. You want to know why? <clears throat> Who owns NBC? GE. <clears throat> Who owns the reactors? General Electric. It's gone already. And this makes, <clears throat> this is three Chernobyls happening at the same time. And instead of telling people you should kind of keep your eye on this, we're being told don't worry about a thing, just go about business as normal. I would be a little protective about, <clears throat> you know, it's funny, I've talked to some of the car people talking about scanning the parts that are coming in from Japan. And they're taking a serious look at the parts coming because they're going to be some radioactive parts on your car. It's already, it's already at Metro. It's already at Metro. See? That's just why I had to keep these guys around. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really miss much of the United States here on the left. <clears throat> We don't have nothing to worry about. It's gone right by us. <laughs> ah, yes. That's good. <clears throat> Next. 
a variety of iodine things. You know, one of any of those and a couple squirts of that would be sufficient at least to keep some minuscule protection. But again, you're protecting against a radioactive iodine. I've been taking iodine for years, and that's why the Japs, they say, are seriously protected because they've been taking iodine forever in their food. They get a lot of it. Next. <clears throat> some of the functions of iodine. You know, it's funny to watch over my 30-year career the fearful things that they tried to say. They always said things. They scared us away from salt. They scared us away from iodine. They scared us away from coconut oil. <clears throat> iodine is so important for so many things. It's such an important mineral. <clears throat> Chemicals, cancers, next. You're going to have to get the tape for some of these. Autoimmune diseases, fetal source of apoptotic mechanism during development. <clears throat> you know, as they tell you to stay away from this, this is the number one cause of low IQ in the developing world. Low I So when my pregnant patients, you can smell the iodine coming out of them. And I have one staff member that's pregnant that I know of at this point in time. <laughs> she is on, I said, you have, I, one lady came in, I said, you got two choices. You need to take extra iodine or you name your kid Pluto. One or the other. <laughs> you get to pick. <laughs> it is huge, huge for making sure your kid doesn't have cancer in the womb. A nickel's worth of iodine keeps you from being an idiot. I can tell there's a lot of people in Washington that did not get that nickel's worth. <laughs> I, argued, I argued with another lady yesterday, because it's part of my life to argue with the weaker folks that spend lots of time in the medical industry. And she is trying to exercise with no salt in her body. So to watch her sweating and overheating, which she could collapse from, <clears throat> do you realize in Finland they cut heart disease 60% by changing the salt that they used? They put salt that's full of potassium and magnesium over sodium. So your doctor has you on salt that's higher in sodium. These two things lower pressure. That one can raise pressure. Nature always provided the salt we were supposed to use, but they took all the minerals out of the salt, and they gave it to the animals, and they gave you the stuff full of aluminum that raised your blood pressure and made you hold water. 60% reduction in heart attack and stroke. And I'm still arguing with people about the proper use of salt to this day. And I did it yesterday. <clears throat> and it was embarrassing. Next. Now somebody sent, you know, the things that fly around on the internet today. <clears throat> I thought this was funny, that we're going to be gifted with a health care plan we're forced to purchase and find if we don't which covers at least 10 million more people without adding a single new doctor, but provides for 16,000 new IRS agents, written by a committee whose chairman says he doesn't understand it, passed by a Congress that didn't read it, but exempted themselves from it, signed by a president who smokes, with funding administered by a treasury chief who didn't pay his taxes, for which will be taxed for four years before any benefits take effect by a government which has already bankrupted Social Security and Medicare, all to be overseen by a Surgeon General who's obese and financed by a country that's broke. <laughs> Next. It's kind of funny. There's a, there's a person in the crowd that was in with her kids and she took her kids years ago for a physical out in Fenton, Brighton, Milford area. 
and you know the height weight sports physicals which I can quickly handle effortlessly for these folks and so she went to the doctor and how tall how much do you weigh etc cetera, etc cetera. and she looked at the kid and said do your parents own guns and the mother said what does that have to do with the sports physical and he said we have to ask that question so she got up from that room walked out and she has never been back to a pediatrician since that day so this is the stuff that they're asking your kids today and that's in your little file now they got your records and they're going to find out everything about you one day with your little records because they're watching out for you because they're going to help take care of you better <clears throat> so that was an interesting part of the physicals being administered to the children today. Uh, next. And, you know, this came to be an unusual part of the lecture. I was talking to my parents about this, what it's like to try to keep some of my old time patients alive. And this, this poor fellow, his, his daughter's in the front row. Come on up here, Linda. <clears throat> Herschel was a fun guy, him and his wife. This is the daughter that always brought him in, and he was very interesting and easy to deal with her, not him. He was on about 15 medications. He sat there like a lump in my office because his blood pressure on 15 medications was 80 over 50. He completely medi. I've said to people like that, my father's bottom number is higher than your top number at 85. My dad's 85 sitting right over here clogging up the second row. <laughs> <clears throat> so Linda went for a seven day vacation. I've lost so many patients from one particular behavior, from one specific, I can't even count how many of these patients I've actually lost. <clears throat> I want you to tell them what she goes away for seven days with her husband because he's a hard-working dude and he needs a vacation. And they cornered Herschel and his assisted living. And she came to by the office and said, what happened to your dad? And this is her short little story. On Tuesday, February 22nd, I took my dad to a local emergency room because his legs were filling up with water due to congestive heart failure, and they admitted him that evening. On Saturday, February 26th, while our entire family was at my niece's wedding, a nurse came into my dad's room and asked if she could give him immunizations. Now, when he had been in the hospital in January, I was present, and they came in the room and asked, and I said, no, our family does not do immunizations. Well, my dad didn't remember that. He was weak, he was all alone. We were at a wedding. He said, sure. They gave him a flu vaccine and they gave him a pneumonia vaccine. <clears throat> One week later, while I was in Florida, I received a phone call from the nurse and she said, Linda, we've done all we can do for your dad. We wanna put him in hospice. He died three weeks later of congestive heart failure. I didn't even know that he had that vaccine until a few days after I came back home and I was at my mother's apartment and I found some paperwork. You should ask my husband what I said. I was really upset. I want to read to you what it says on the back of the paper that they give you when they give you this wonderful gift called an immunization under some people should not get PPSV or should wait. Anyone who is moderately or severely ill when the shot is scheduled may be asked to wait until they recover before getting the vaccine. Oops, I think they forgot to ask my dad that question. <clears throat> I've had two, two of my special patients who had leukemia and the doctors did a great job on having it in remission. And they were both came in, they want me to have this vaccine. I said, your leukemia is quiet. 
why would you, you know, risk this now? The doctors have done a great job with it. After both of them, and these families have been long-term patients, we buried both of them exactly 30 days after their flu shot. The leukemia came out of remission, and I've seen this time and time again. Now, to avoid some of these questions, my family, my kids have never been to a pediatrician. So I, they've not ever been, I cut my ties. I grew up with great insurance from my dad's Ford Motor Company, Sal Reed stuff, and I thought they were trying to kill me. So I fired him at 15, and I'm 53, and I was done that many years ago with the shots and the allergy shots and the ear aches and the sore throats. I was sick forever. <clears throat> so it's kind of troublesome job to hear how intertwined so many patients are and how easy it has been to stay out of that system. Now, I hope to shed some light, you know, on this Mideast thing today, this Middle Eastern thing. They act like all these dictators and all these little skirmishes and this train wreck that we've caused in the Middle East. There's the story behind the story. You know, to really understand what's going on, what you're going to see here in the next few years is battles over food. Food and water is going to be the battle. Don't let them kid you what it's about. These people cannot afford to feed themselves. You know, Al did a great job with the ethanol thing in corn when you made the farmers, by law, have to put corn to gas. You started to starve off the third world when that happened. The price of corn, I've been on vacation and listened to the locals that made two bucks a day, they could eat for a dollar. Now their little tacos cost three bucks a day and they make two because the corn's been diverted. <clears throat> There's a lot of strange things happening. I have a three part video. You're gonna see each part. I'm gonna set the stage. In the middle, I'm going to show you part two, then part three. And I'm going to show you what the clan, what really is going on. On certain days, you can see these trails actually dropping vertically like a veil. Uh, we assume the particulates are descending, and, and we have the test to prove that uh, we are being inundated with uh, levels of aluminum and particulates that are literally tens of thousands of times what would already be considered high. So we're not talking about uh, exposure to... Uh, a, a slight percentage higher of, of these toxic materials. We're, we're talking about quantities, for example, off the side of Mount Shasta. If you can pan back, that's a, that's a landmark in Northern California, considered to be a pristine water source. Uh, aluminum or snow sample off the side of Mount Shasta tested 61,000 parts per billion. This is just ordinary snow water. And people are drinking this stuff when they're hiking on the mountain. And remember, government action is required at 1,000. This is 61 times over the government limit, and our hikers are drinking this poisonous water on Mount Shasta Mountain oh itself. God. Barium, 83. Strontium, 383. So this summer, the people climbing are drinking poison. Uh, basically. I, I certainly wouldn't want to drink 61,000 micrograms per liter of aluminum. And again, we, we've already seen in five years soil pHs in this area that have escalated 10 to 12 times. And we can prove that conclusively. Well, this is not speculation. We can prove conclusively that these metals have been in the rain. We have duplicate samples. Bachelor of Science in Forestry, International School of Forestry at Missoula. Masters in Zoology, specialized in aquatics. 35 years with the U.S. Forest Service as a wildlife biologist and before that uh, several years with the USDA Soil Conservation Service as a soil conservationist. Also have run the botany programs, uh, range and grazing programs and I continue that today. Right now I do a lot of master gardener consultation work. When I started this garden back in about 2005 or so pH here was 5.5, 5.6. This is the old soil survey of the county. Mm -hmm. You can look at the page right here. This is my soil right here. 
-hmm. It's a Dietz 125-126 here at my house. And here, the soil reaction pH should be between 4.5 and 6.0. And over there in the pure mud, it's even a little darker. It's 6.8 right there. And, and what can this do to plant life and ecosystems? Well, you haul one of these things out and you start looking at the little, little things that are crawling around in the soil. A lot of times they aren't there anymore. The uh, little soil arthropods that you can barely see on a microscope, you can actually see movement with this. Little tiny, tiny, tiny macroscopic, look like little moving pieces of dust. Those start to go away. They're not gone entirely, but they start to go away. This is black oak acorns. You know, this is, this is pieces of cedar wood. You know, come on, folks. This should be very acid, and I'm getting 10 times higher than expected. There's something really wrong here. Well, you can see all those uh, reports, you, lots you of them. You have over 20 reports here. Uh, well, at least 20. I'd say it'd be closer to 30. All revealing dangerous amounts of aluminum and barium. You know, the science is there that something funny is happening, and the naysayers say, well, so what? Isn't neutral good? Well, no, neutral's not good. Neutral is not good. If your soil is supposed to be 5.6, it should stay 5.6 if you want the forest to be healthy. And if you want to grow a good garden, you have to keep your pH around 6.0, 6.5. Here's another test that's revealing 375,000 yeah. parts per million aluminum, barium at 3,000. 90 and strontium at 345. Yeah, that's from a lined pond with EPDM fish safe pond liner. There is no chemicals, manufacturing materials at all in that pond liner that's uh, available to the aquatic life. It's designed for that purpose. The well that feeds this pond has been tested and retested. ND, no detectable aluminum, zero. The only other place this pond can receive water is rainfall. We are located on a filtered forested hilltop, miles and miles and miles away from any industry, highway, and so forth. After several heavy spray days, there was a film that we, we received formed on the surface of the water, and we tested that crust, and it was uh, uh, aluminum and barium. That after a year and a half's accumulation had 375,000 parts per billion of aluminum in it, it's literally toxic. We can say conclusively that what we see in the sky matches expressly what's outlined in numerous patents and the materials on the ground match those patents. This material was not there five years ago. It is a recent phenomenon in the quantities it's in. It has escalated in some cases 50,000% in five years in the case of aluminum. From our original baseline reading of seven parts per billion, which was already high, it has escalated up to 50,000% in five years. And we've seen profound changes in that time. Dr. Leonard Time, um, PhD in chemistry, I cross-checked with him, and he says the oxides of aluminum, barium, and strontium will drive your pH into the coastal, from an acid soil like this up into the neutral. There's no question about it. And, and that's exactly? That's exactly what you see happening. Wow. Now that's the long one, there's two short ones. Just remember that. You gotta put what he just told you in the back of your head before you get to part two and three. All right, next. Our, the costs of our, you know, I went to, I got a special invite from the director of operations of the Red Wings. So me and my wife went down I gotta say this as delicately as possible to the Red Wing game. We were in this cool suite, like the owner suite or something like that, where all the dignitaries hang out. <clears throat> and it was the, there's a law firm that supports the Red Wings heavily. And it, we had the blank, blank power play, and we had the blank, blank shootout, then we had the blank, blank intermission. Then we had the blank, blank halftime show. Then I got in the car and I drove home and his face was all over the expressway. It was the blank, blank 
firm that will litigate anybody. Then I got home, I turned on the TV because I left before the game was over. And then there he was again. I saw this about 20 times. I'm willing to sue anybody for anything. <clears throat> when the doctors sit home and watch this in their life every single night, the paper saying <clears throat> that you're getting squeezed because of our legal system and the doctors are scared to try to operate in this litigious society without some kind of tort reform like the rest of the world has, if you don't, if you file a frivolous lawsuit and you lose, you have to pay costs. That's the way the rest of the world operates. So you sit and watch doctors are ordering tests because they're afraid. And in this economic quagmire that we're in, there's a level of people that live trying to sue the doctors. So your costs are being driven through the moon as our chaotic legal system runs, uh, runs completely amok. You're paying for it much more than I am. North Carolina, for some people out there that like to practice, they're trying to pass Senate Bill 31 to criminalize naturopaths, homeopaths, herbalists, midwives, aromatherapists, etc. <clears throat> they're coming after your supplements. So get used to it, be, be prepared to fight, because they want, as everybody, a huge segment of the population turning to more natural approaches to health, they're gonna put them as far out of reach as possible as they can. Next. You know, a lot of my work in the office is mechanical, adjusting, backs, necks. And so many of you folks out there have grossly neglected chiropractic care. I wouldn't even begin to say, now I have a very successful practice, so I'm not trying to drum up business, but you've grossly neglected chiropractic care. You think it's the back neck pain thing? This is the daughter of a famous coach that just came to Michigan. And I had forgotten all about this. Kelly says, you know, this guy's daughter was at your lecture. I said, really? So she went in the basement and pulled out his file. She came from Youngstown, Indiana. He's, he's all over the news right now. It's easy to figure out who it is. And she had some other issues, and this was her second complaint. Diagnosed with left side cerebral palsy. Left side feels tight and weak. Left fine motor skills are affected left eye visions off since birth. I said, I've never heard of left-sided cerebral palsy in my life. I said, that's, you've got to be kidding. So big universities, tons of doctors, next. I adjusted her atlas on the left side. Her brain stem was pinched at birth, right there. She got a great adjustment, no neck pain, no tingling, no car accident, none of this baloney, next. And how, how do you thank somebody that changed the life of your 17, 19 year old daughter? And that's a long article signed Laura, Brady, and Kelly. I'd forgotten all about this story and Kelly reminded me and the, the lady that sent her to me. And this is why Shaquille O'Neal runs like he does. And this had nothing to do with neck or back pain. Next, another real nice patient. She came in because of one of these heart lectures. Can you help me with, because I've had a mild stroke in February. I have basal or artery stenosis. The arteries are narrowed. She dropped to the ground five times. It's over a year and a half. She's on Plavix, Lipitor, Naldol, Paxil, Lasex, and Lisinopril. That's don't think that's a lot. They're on 14 things. That's probably just half of what the average person comes in on. Next, <clears throat> her neck was pinching an artery, so I adjusted her neck. <clears throat> she had an MRA done on 8-8. The basal artery is completely open now. I've never felt so good in my life. And the amount of radioactive dye studies they have put her through to fixed it to tell her what's wrong, then after I fixed her, probably will cut time off her life. 
<laughs> all she had was her neck out of place, and she didn't come in for neck pain, didn't come in because she was in a car accident, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just some interesting mechanical things that Kelly threw into the lecture. <clears throat> Wasn't this is going to be a made-for-TV movie, isn't it? The kid with the layup and he croaked, took the shot and croaked. I can Lifetime Channel. I can see it. They're going to pass out the tissues and everybody's going to cry and it's going to be, you know, Oprah's going to grab this thing as fast as she can. It was an interesting story. You read books like this. A guy takes a shot and he croaked. One child at ABC News says one child dies every three days of heart-related issues on a soccer field, on track, hockey, basketball. Every three days a kid dies. They said he had cardiomyopathy. People said to me, well, what would, what would you have done if this was your patient? Now, I have, you want to know what a weak heart looks like? I've seen a thousand of them. Exercise-induced asthma, sports-induced asthma. That's what they call it. And I brought this 17-year-old kid in. <clears throat> Mom had a thick accent. Second, you know, she was first. The kid talked like I did. 17 years old, sports-induced asthma. And with some special testing, I said, your son appears to have a weak heart. That night, this kid croaked, not my patient, this kid croaks in basketball, and I thought, oh boy, his mother's gonna be completely traumatized on this particular day. These are two, cardiomyopathy is what he had. Now, cardiomyopathy, next, <clears throat> is a deficiency in the mother while she's pregnant. Kaishan's disease is a famous disease that was in China. All the kids were dropping dead of heart failure between 15 and 20. They went and checked the soil. There's no selenium in the soil. So these kids, they went and put a nickel's worth of selenium in their food and they eliminated Kaishan's disease. You know, people say, well, what, with that kind of a problem, what do you think? Let him go down with a bang. A heart transplant at his age was about all he could have done. You know, Steve Jobs had a heart transplant, or a liver transplant. And the anti-rejection medications on a cancer patient can be brutal. So what you're watching Steve Jobs wither away, and who's a national treasure, I think. You know, that guy's got the best stuff, and it's a shame to see his health struggles. He seems like such a great guy. But anti-rejection medication at 17 is going to make you a, have a long, tough, debilitating life with no immune system. Next. <clears throat> if you understand how important <clears throat> a pregnancy protocol is, you can look up on the website. You can find that. They'll help you out with that. Next. i got to actually move along because the heart's complicated. I'm going to get through as much as I can today. <clears throat> now next year, before the fall season comes, and I'm going to be tortured, I have to get a yearly torture as the drum beat starts for the flu shots. Everybody needs it. We're all going to die if we don't get it. <clears throat> they found out that the World Health Organization scientists were linked, linked to the swine flu vaccine makers. It's time to start to open up your eyes and find out that people trying to scare you into these things are always the people that made these things. And so this is it's going to start. They've already been caught. This, infor, you know, this information age, you wonder why they're going to restrict the internet. There's a lot of information out there. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> Now, this is some of the best of medicine. I have sent 40, 50 people to two great cardiac electrophysiologists. One guy, and I've done this for so long, 
come on up here. You two, come on up here. That's actually, I want you, that's actually your, I asked her mom and her, and their journey to find an intelligent cardiologist, and they're out there, you just got to find them. I, she has, like, I have lots of people like this. They've been institutionalized. They're on antipsychotic medication. I've had them put in the absolute psych ward. I've had them on a ton of medications till they were in a chemical straitjacket. Because <clears throat> that right there, panic attacks, heart races in pounds, chest pain. How many doctors did it take just us to go through to get to the smart person, mom? And these are, these are medical people, and there's, there's, you got to kind of wade through the Frank Burns on MASH to get to the one that knows, to get to the Hawkeye guy. It's not always a straight shot. Um, well, my then 16-year-old daughter complained of chest pains and tightness right before exams her sophomore year, so I attributed it to panic attacks, you know, nerves and such. Um, after she got over exams it continued all summer long when there was nothing going on but fun so we thought we'd have her checked out and we probably went through four yeah. cardiac type doctors you know with insurance we my husband has health insurance you have to go through certain hoops see certain people before you get to the right one but um she was a regular patient already of dr tents and in between all this we mentioned this to him, and uh, first we first we approached it with the cardio plus. See if her heart would settle down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And continued looking at the medical side of it as well. Um, that soon piddled out, you know, very quickly when just about every doctor said, "Well, she's a straight A student. You know, she's keyed up. There's nothing wrong here." Um, they weren't finding anything, and Dr. Tent then, when the Cardio Plus didn't take care of the problem, um, he looked at the, um, what was it called, the electrical, electrical, well, the, abs the electrical activity, yeah, put that next slide up. The electrical <clears throat> impulses of her. Trying to get her through, now Fred Marotti is the best guy in the world at this, but he's getting older now. He has some protégés. These people have done wonderful things. And I sent her, this gal's been great to work with, Alana Katinsky, and she's my new one since I've done this so long. All my doctors have kind of retired and I've had to find new ones. And they said, there's no way she needs this. We've never seen this on a gal her age. It's a laser job on the heart to stop it from beating funny. How good were your results? Amazing. I feel completely different. Her, Dr. Marathi was like a four-month wait just to get into, you know, just talk, just to talk to him. Yeah. So we started looking and, and found this doctor here. But Dr. Tent was the one that figured out from her symptoms they weren't, you know, they weren't stressed, they weren't this, they weren't that. Um, there was an actual something was happening to her, and cardiologists were saying it's all in your head go home. We, we actually jerked her off the table at one appointment. It was so just and what did you, shocking. Yeah. What did you, please share with, the, I'm, <laughs> I'm proud of her. Tell the crowd what you told him first, then what you told his patients waiting in the waiting room as you stormed yeah. out. I'm not kidding. He didn't even look at my chart um, before. He didn't look at my chart once. He didn't uh, hmm. look at any test results. He basically looked at me. He was saying, oh, you're a straight-A student. You must just be under stress. Um, there's, there's nothing physically happening to you. Despite the fact that she'd be in my bedroom every night, you know, two, three times a night saying, hmm. I, I think I'm losing my mind. I, my chest is pounding so hard I could see her throat hmm. moving. You could see it through her body. And this doctor sat there barely, barely any information and said it's all in her head and she was sitting on the table in her paper gown and <clears throat> you know I was standing there next to her and he kept saying mom just go go sit down sit down and let me talk and I 
pulled her off the table in her paper gown and I said, that's something not so nice. And I said, it's about time for you to retire. <laughs> and I took her out of the room and slammed that door and left him there and the nurses all kind of rallied around to see what was going on and he had a he had a room full of patients women holding their infants and she got dressed and as we walked out I said you people you better get out of here I said this guy <laughs> doesn't know what he's doing I hope they don't do you that know? in my office <laughs> <laughs> well in the in the heat of the moment it was you know, it was very enraging. I, I, I want you to look at these two women. They take the oils. They take the supplements. That I, you tell me if you've seen healthier skin on two women, mother and daughter. They take the right oils. They use the coconut oil. I've told them, you know, some cool things to do for the skin. And you look how they glow. We were in Florida. Oh. <laughs> and you took my pills. Yes. yes and yes. you took my pills. Good. Thank you. All right, that was a cool story. <laughs> Those folks, to try, this is what Joey Harrington had when he collapsed with the Lions. This is Joey Harrington. They, now you got a choice. There's a lot of people pounding beta blockers with this. When the doctors laser the stray beats out of your heart, they tell you to get off your medication and go back to your life. That's what the Lions quarterback had. But the folks that do this do an outstanding job on getting these hearts back in rhythm. And I've probably sent 40, 50, but I don't know, two or three cardiologists, it's like dealing with folks. I mean, this is your heart doctor. Have you not ever heard of this before? So it's kind of a sad thing, but a lot of, I'm sure more people are on medication than having the procedure done. Next. Andrew Wakefield has been proved innocent. They tried to make him look like a quack and they jerked his license in England and he's been absolutely found that they misrepresented all the facts about his autism in children, but that never made the paper. So I wanted to help at least vindicate him. <coughs> Next. <coughs> Magnesium is the thing for the heart. I have both my parents on a very high-end magnesium. Both my parents run high blood pressure. I don't want them on, personally, medication. I'll get to that later. But magnesium, you want to have high levels of magnesium. Next. Smartest thing you can do when you get older. When you look at renal failure, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, blood clots, etc., I like people taking magnesium to bowel tolerance. I have both my parents on that. Next. This is Dnieper's formula out of uh, Germany. Next. <clears throat> Significantly reduce the incidence of arrhythmia and congestive heart failure. Improve the strength of the heart muscle. There's a tremendous magnesium deficiency in the people today. Why? Because everything's fortified with calcium. And they've drained the magnesium by fortifying everything with calcium. The in-hospital death rate was 74% lower in the magnesium group. <clears throat> Older folks, you want lots of magnesium in your body because it keeps your heart very relaxed and happy. Next. <clears throat> this is what my, my parents do, very simple. Viscosity. <clears throat> There's my hockey pill. I take 10 of those for hockey. There's the magnesium. I want their eyes clearer and their brain sharper, and there's the two blood thinners, that makes it slippery, that oxygenates the heart, and there's, so I have my parents doing. That's, <clears throat> and my dad, Thanksgiving, a couple years ago. Guess, I'm sitting at Thanksgiving, me and my wife. <clears throat> my best friend died, the guy I went to kindergarten with, Harold, Harold Cochran. He said he was perfectly healthy. He said, what do you mean? He said, I said, what do you mean your best friend died? He said, well, how'd he die? He said his duodenum ruptured. I looked at him. I said, for Pete's sakes, he pooped inside himself. I said, you're not supposed to die like that. And he looked at me, he says, why would he, he said he's perfectly healthy. Why would he poop inside himself? I said, simple, Coumadin and Lipitor. He said, you're kidding. I said, no. He got up from the table, called Shirley Cochran, his widow. I've never met this dude. He's in Phoenix, Arizona. Call Shirley. Shirley, I was talking to my son about Harold. What medication was Harold taking? 
He walked back to the table, gospel true story. He said, how did you know that? I said, that's what's happening to all of them. I said, that's what he said, that's exactly what was taken. I said, exactly. So I have a, we have a close relative right now on those medications. And <clears throat> they were in the office. And guess what? I'm getting shots in my eye. Now, I don't know. You heard about the people getting all the shots in their eyes right now? I mean, I, this wasn't 30 years ago. So I was, li I was listening to his story. He said, well, I played cards with all these old guys, and everybody's had it. So <clears throat> between the blood thinners and pulling the fat out of these people, their eyes are rupturing all their membranes in it. Bob Talbert's bowel exploded. I've watched this time and time again, and you're, you're seeing people's head explode. Well, I'll guarantee you, who was that Richard Holbrook, the guy that had the surgery, the politician? Had an, had his, his artery was ripping. Did an 11-hour surgery when he died, that envoy Richard Holbrook. I will bet you anything what he was taking. I watched this over and over and over. People are ripping and tearing apart on the blood thinners and the cholesterol medication. You can bank on it. <clears throat> so to have their eyes get sharper and their brain clearer, watching their friends, next. <clears throat> Throw in the statins that cause memory loss and depression. Let them breathe the junk out of the air. Then put them on Nexium. Stop their stomach from digesting their food. Then start filling them up with flu shots. I will guarantee you, you will lose your mind. I will guarantee you, you're going to lose your mind. And it's, you know, croaking's one thing. Running around thinking you're Napoleon with just a t-shirt on is a whole nother thing. <laughs> and I've had patients running around thinking they're Napoleon with a t-shirt on. <clears throat> I've had some famous patients lately that were very sick. They're in their television people. And because they're sick and rich and I'm the last doctor, not the first. Their hair analysis have been disasters, complete disasters. And after the, you know, all the expensive high-end doctors had a shot at them, this is what they came in with. <clears throat> Struggling memory, decreased brain function, some vision loss, difficulty staying asleep, fatigue and weakness. Real weakness in the legs. Next. <clears throat> Here's her hair analysis. This is a wonderful woman. I'm doing this because of this patient. A griefless patient. She drives 100 miles to see us. Here's your hair analysis. One year later, next. There's the mercury level a year later. <clears throat> no grief. I didn't have to argue. I didn't have to beg. I didn't have to screen 16 doctors through U of M and Beaumont. She just did it. <clears throat> what was she taking? Brain function, huge change. Energy, this, this weakness in her body started to disappear. This weakness in the legs. Weakness in the legs. And this was this famous patient. My legs are so weak. On television, he had serious trouble on television. <clears throat> Suppositories, one year. Not one lick of grief, and she's a brand new person. And this is at 47, she's losing her mind. You all better take a look at this because poorly nourished people absorb aluminum, Mercury, lead, you will absorb the heavy metals in place of minerals. So since everybody wants your insurance company to pay for your stuff, well, all you're going to get is poison. You better plug the holes in your diet. If you don't get your minerals, you are going to absorb heavy metals in the place of your minerals. We'll cover more of that later. Next. <clears throat> So since they found all these banned chemicals in 100% of the pregnant women, what have these banned chemicals done? You want to know the most obvious thing that this has done? It's confused their gender. It's confused their gender. The guys are kind of girls, and the girls are kind of guys. Do we have a problem? In 1994, that metrosexual word came out. Ooh, that happening guy. He started to go to the salon, and he had a purse, and he had some jewelry, and he had a tattoo, and he started 
take a special interest in like cooking and stuff. We played war, combat. We threw snowballs at cars, and when we were in a good mood, we'd stick firecrackers in them. <laughs> Not today. Not today. We're all playing jump rope in one big pile. <laughs> Next. Now, for the detoxification in the office, I want you to mention this. If you want to have a boy or you want to have a girl, you better keep the chemicals down or you're going to have maybe an it. Maybe a them. <clears throat> and so the point is, I watched, there's some meatheads out there that don't understand. There's a lot of people with gender confusion that didn't have a chance. And only God knows that. So you can't sit and pick on these people. I'm just telling you where it came from. Don't think shooting them is going to do a blessing for God. We only do that to the, like, the Libyans and Iraqis and Afghanistan people. <clears throat> Bill Gates wants to register all. What happens when you get rich and you lose your mind? How can you lose your mind when you're rich? He's lost his mind. Every time he opens up his mouth, he has some plan to thin down the herd. I don't think this is in... Is he trying to play God or something? Is this, if you have enough money, do you think you're the God-like kind of guy? <clears throat> wow, we want to register every newborn on the planet. Well, that's why my kids haven't been there. They're not really in the registry. So we haven't really... <clears throat> about the only calls we get, as soon as they turn 18, the Marines are on the phone in about two days. And I won't even tell you what my wife said to them when they called, because I don't think <clears throat> it would probably be real easy, and I don't blame her for saying it. Next. Are we giving our soldiers drugs that may make them want to kill themselves? I thought this was interesting, because they said 36% of the suicides were troops that never went overseas. The carnage that I've seen. You're in North Carolina. You didn't see any carnage. 36%. I am not going to say these drugs are at the bottom. You'll have to get the DVD because half my patients are taking them that come in. I have all different kinds of patients, and I don't want to <clears throat> insult that. Next. <clears throat> and that, I've said at previous lectures, my son brought U of M to a halt by asking a question in a room full of kids <clears throat> that were fulfilling some driving requirement. And they turned it into a, if you're having some trouble with your thinking, we have plenty of great medications. You do not even know the question my son asked that lady and completely shut the meeting off. How come there's suicide warnings on the medication that are supposed to make you happy? The lady's tongue got into a knot. The meeting was canceled 45 minutes early because my son asked a question that the lady didn't like to answer. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. Second question. How, yes, son? How come all the kids that shot up to schools were taking those medications? That's enough for today. I think we can dismiss the class early. Honest. My wife is in the back. She was witness the whole thing. When did the placebo start? Placebo works just as good even if they know they're getting a placebo. Why would you take something toxic if the placebo works as good as something else? <laughs> the placebo started on the beaches of Normandy when they ran out of morphine. And the guy's arms and legs were blown off. They didn't have any morphine. So they hung some water, just put some water, tell them it's morphine, and all their pain went away. And it was a bag of water, and they were sitting there with no leg, and they had no pain. Hmm. I used this at a lecture, Celebrex Viox. Now, there's your ibuprofens right here. There's your COX-2 inhibitors, your Celebrex Viox. They were in, the, I had a couple of good ones recently. And they say it's playing Russian roulette with your heart. That drug right there caused more heart attacks than people that died in the Vietnam War. 
Vioxx by itself killed more people in Vietnam. Uh, next, I'm getting tall, got to get to my numbers. <clears throat> well, we knew that all along. It's not been in my house. <clears throat> I made sure that, you know, tried to keep the kids with some great alternatives, ask the girls at the office for what we brush our teeth with. Next. <clears throat> if you get your kids all the shots up to date before they're two, you get $20 at McDonald's, Rite Aid, Target, or a Meyer gift card. So anybody would like to pick up 20 bucks, just Stephanie wants to help you out here, and I just, and it's free. Good. Next. Mercola had a great thing, this depression test. If you took this depression test, it's 10 questions. And Mercola busted them and said, no matter how you answered the 10 questions, you needed the drug. <laughs> <laughs> they tried it every different way, good, bad, up, down, everybody flunked. No matter how you answer the question, you need drugs. We tried telling them that in the 70s. They argued with us then. Right now, it's pretty easy. <clears throat> Senate Bill 510. Where am I at here? Senate Bill 510. <clears throat> I'm going to put this as part of the DVD that you can get next. Put the next one up because you can read this at your own time when a lot of people take the DVDs home, they're free, sign them out, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. All these things are talking about our food. What we got to do, we want the government to control our food supply, of course. Next. Now, my 17 things start right after clip part two, and we're going to start our 17 heart things. I have a doctorate in inorganic chemistry from Oregon State University mm -hmm. in which I was working with different metals and oxidation states mm -hmm. and then did a postdoctorate work at Brandeis where I was working stabilizing off oxidation states of different metals. The goal is to sort of figure out how everything fits in the dynamic equilibrium of life I was working with Francis up in uh, Mount Shasta and he showed me some rainwater analyses that had to do with levels of aluminum, strontium and barium mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. So I feel the major toxin in these chemtrails is the aluminum. And from the levels we were looking in at Mount Shasta, this is totally, totally unacceptable. When you get to metals and biological systems, you're no longer talking about the bulk aluminum that people think about when they're using, drinking from soda pop cans and that. So once it gets to the aluminum oxide stage, it just forms a plaque within your arteries mm -hmm. and shuts down life. When you take elements that normally aren't out in the environment and you start putting them in the environment, it raises some serious red flags. Mm -hmm. Aluminum is a very specific nasty in biological systems. It takes that site and it never lets go and it shuts down the site and that's it. And so as you accumulate aluminum over time, mm -hmm. it causes major neurological damage because it ends up as aluminum oxide that's essentially stuck in place and can't be flushed out by normal system. My name is Karen Johnson. I served in the Arizona State Legislature for 12 years. I was in the House for eight of those years and in the Senate for four of those years. When you see a plane fly overhead, there's a trail that leaves the end of that plane and it goes from one horizon all the way to the other as the plane flies across and it begins to filter out and cover more and more of the sky in kind of ripples. It widens out and fills the whole sky. I mean, it, how could anybody think that that was the case? And then to live and to be underneath that and know that whatever is in that is falling down upon you and upon your animals and upon the earth. And I mean, it's frightening to me. 
And if people don't start really waking up and facing the fact that we've got people that are doing terrible things to us, and we had better wake up and fight back now. I mean, I'm the mom of 11 kids. I've got 35 grandkids. I mean, I've got a stake in this. I care about what is going to be left for my children. I care about it, and I'm extremely worried about what is going to be left to them. Aluminum is toxic, and we know that it's accumulative. And we know that we're getting more. So we're absorbing it in the air. We're drinking it in our water. So we are accumulating more. So the thought of more aluminum being dispersed in our environment in the way that you mentioned is very frightening to us and very disturbing to us. Those of us who have done any research on this are really quite concerned that we are ill-informed about this issue and mostly that it's being done. Uh, aluminum is toxic. We know that it is. Uh, we can debate as to the amount of toxicity that is going to be disturbing the body, but as far as uh, really accepting the fact that it's accumulative, it's synergistic, then we have to conclude that it's not a good idea to put it in our atmosphere, especially when we know we're getting increased amounts. The concern is, is off the charts about why is this happening? Why is this being allowed to be sprayed continually all over the United States, all over the world? Uh, who is paying for this? I mean, the incidence of Alzheimer's has just skyrocketed, which evidently has to do with an accumulation of aluminum in the brain cells. I mean, I think almost every family has been touched by a member, as they get older, having Alzheimer's. And, and it's a horrible, it's a horrible disease. And to say that, well, this just came because people drank soda pop out of aluminum cans, you know, when my father passed away with Alzheimer's and he didn't ever drink soda pop, you know, that, that explanation doesn't ring true with me. And so I'm wondering how much did this chemtrail spraying back in the Illinois area affect him? But if you look at this, you can see the, these are parts uh, per million. They sent this to me and I just found this to be extremely interesting because we should have like two parts per million of aluminum in our air. And this is saying that there's 39,000 parts of aluminum. That's astronomical. Barium is high. I mean, these are way off the charts of what people should be breathing or what's coming down on them. And, you know, if people wonder why their health is deteriorating, why they're having to go to emergency rooms, why they can't breathe, you know, why they're getting Alzheimer's, this has been planned. We have elites, I don't know what you want to call them, one world or Illuminati, I don't know, whatever you want to call them, but in with these people that don't care about the average person. That's part two. The answer is in part three, which is real short. Now, she's a state senator, so these people have lots of credentials. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> I had a great patient who is deceased now. He was 85. I got him to 85. When he was about 57, his triglycerides were 800. His LDL was probably 400. Uh, he was a great guy. I still treat his family. <clears throat> his name was Hugh Sophie, HMS Engineering, 60 Mile and Big Beaver, a bright guy. He would like to know that I'm discussing this with him. It was a strange case. I couldn't. He had to stand some artery cleaning supplements, and every time he stopped, he plugged up. And I got him 30 years. His blood work was so bad his internist called me. Do you know how awful his numbers are? I said, yes, I do. They're horrible. Just send them over because he's not going to follow any of your instructions anyway. I got him 30 years to die at 85. The point is the 30,000 milligrams of zinc oxide in his denture cream all the fat-bearing enzymes in your liver depend on copper. You cannot take the men that overdid the zinc in the 60s, plugged their arteries shut, and had fatal heart attacks. And sitting in here at 85, 
as this literature started to come out, this is why I struggled. And he was fine, ran his, a big successful company. And I got 30 years out of this guy with blood that was toothpaste. And it was at the end of his life. It was his denture cream. <clears throat> this stuff is killing the people because you can't take that much zinc. It's impossible. You're going to throw off all your other minerals. And the mineral that you're throwing out metabolizes fat in the liver. That's what they did. So it's kind of interesting to get this answer. When I went into the hospital and he sat without his teeth in and all this stuff came out at the same time, and he was a great patient. He should have never lived 30 years with blood that was toothpaste, and he did. Next. <clears throat> Mevacor. I go back to Mevacor days. Merck had a little secret they didn't tell you about, and it's true to this day. Mevacor sucked the coke, blocked the CoQ10 pathway. So every time there's 14 vitamins and minerals that run the cholesterol pathway in the liver. Next. <clears throat> Low levels of CoQ10, are, this is inert literature, are implicated in virtually all cardiovascular diseases, including angina, hypertension, cardiomyopathy, and congestive heart failure. Merck knew that statins could deplete CoQ10 and knew that this could contribute to heart disease. Now, what are you taking the pill for? Heart disease. In 1990, they patented a cholesterol medication, put 1,000 milligrams of CoQ10 to alleviate heart failure. Next. However, Merck has not bought this product to market. Nor has this drug company educated physicians on the importance of supplementing CoQ10 to offset the dangers. <clears throat> they, had us, and they knew this back in 1990. So I watched these people get weaker and weaker and weaker. And <clears throat> it's quite a battle. I told my father and mother, I said, this, there's a list of medications I do not want my parents to take. Next. There's a lot of energy, a great pill for some of my heart. I enjoy ATP. ATP is what CoQ10 has to deal with. I enjoy taking two or three of these a day because it makes me very sturdy throughout the day. It makes my muscles have a lot of energy. So that's what you can take if you've had to rebuild people's ATP reserves after cholesterol medication. That pill works outstanding. Check the website. You can find it. Next. Uh, simple stuff. What's the, what's the number of the 900 studies that they published in the American Journal of Cardiovascular Drugs? Memory problems is number one. Pain or numbness in the extremities, number two. Remember, testosterone is, is fed, sexual dysfunction. Testosterone comes from cholesterol. And liver, I've had liver enzymes up to three or 400 on that. Next. I'm keeping going. Now, the Framingham study started this, but again, nobody read the Framingham study. William Castelli was the director of the Framingham study, published in 92. We found that the people who ate the most saturated fat, the most cholesterol, and the most calories weighed the least, were more physically active, and had the lowest cholesterol levels. That was the Framingham study that they quoted to sell you the fat-lowering drugs. But nobody read the Framingham study. That's the Framingham study. I don't know. That's all right. Now, everybody started the low-fat craze. Now they're all fat and diabetic, and their glucose is in the sky. Their triglycerides are up. So it worked like a charm. And you should see what the diet they have the diabetics on. I've had, <clears throat> had a guy from Oscoda recently. He'll see this when he's in the waiting room. His second visit with this week. He liked the steak, chicken, fish, he shot deer, he shot animals, he ate everything he shot. Him and his wife were in this week. This was his second visit. So he liked to eat off the land. He was the big, he's a landscaper, outdoor worker, big, strong guy. He came down because he wanted a different approach to his sugar. His glucose is running 222. So they're, you know, pretty easy going country folks like some of my relatives. So he's got his glucose at 120. The nurse says to him, if you eat like this, the way you're eating, 
fat, protein, meat, you're going to have a heart attack. She put him on 10 fruits a day. He comes in, his glucose is 222 on. They sent him to the hospital in Oscoda. And he sat down with the dietician. So the, he says, I have a cooler of fruit in the car as I speak. If you sat and listened to what the dietitians, you'll have a heart attack. So he was in, went back to his deer, his venison, all the stuff he could shoot, hopefully the clean things. He had it down to 150, and he was in Monday. It was a second visit with a couple of supplements to help him. He said, I feel great again. They <clears throat> I listened to how they eat, cereal, fruit, juice, toast. Who told you to eat like that? My doctor. Well, that's why he's a diabetic doctor, because he told you to eat like that. I couldn't tell you what the diabetics eat. It's completely, we just sit and look at them. It doesn't make any sense. It's unbelievable. I don't know what to say. And they wanted to find out what vitamin E did. By the way, there's my hockey pills. I have a 10-15 hockey game tonight. There's my hockey pills. And a guy croaked on my league about uh, six weeks ago. Anybody see Fox News about two Mondays ago? They gave a bunch of hockey players an award for saving some guy's life. Anybody see that on the news? You saw it? That's my league. So I went to hockey, and, and my league was all backed up because I get there right on time because I can dress faster than those guys. It's, I'm known in the league to get dressed and undressed. Tent, what's the deal? Well, it's simple. I'm self-employed. The rest of you guys are salaried, and I move faster than you. <laughs> so I get there just on the nick of time. And his hockey was all backed up. What happened? John Bruden croaked on the ice. Really? I said, what happened to him? He came over, tongue rolled back in his head. They put the paddles to him and jerked him back to life, cleared out his airways, hauled him off in the ambulance, and put four stints in his heart. So how many people saw that on Fox News? That's my league. So they were giving all these people awards for saving his life. And the things that I do, the things that I've talked to some of the uh, professional athletes to do, they wanted to find out what vitamin E did. So back in the 40s, they raised cows on everything but vitamin E. Every single mineral they could give them, because animals are fed 10 times better than you. The vets can't afford the medical bills, so they're, they're well mineralized. So they were born, raised, and all of a sudden they started to die one by one in the field, just like that. They didn't think vitamin E did anything. And all of a sudden, all the animals died where they stood, sudden death. And they realized that when your maternal stores of vitamin E were consumed, you dropped dead where you stood. Sudden death. And those are my hockey pills I put out there, which I will take shortly, because you know I wanted to say something to my team, because they don't know that I do this. I'm the, I'm the center on the team. They don't, I'm just, we're all one guy's a defense. We'll try to keep work out of it. I went, I had to bite my tongue last year. These big tough guys, the defenseman goes, got my H1N1, I'm protected. I just looked at this poor guy and rolled my eyes. And the next guy says, got my flu shot last week. I'm like, oh, for Pete's sakes. <clears throat> and I opened my mouth and then I closed it. Then I, I opened my mouth again and I closed it. It ain't worth it. So I just put my skates on, realized all these little weird germs were flying around in the room that they were sloughing off. This is what vitamin E looks like. Vitamin E is a complex molecule. It's a very complicated molecule. It's not d alpha tocopherol. When you take, you go home and look at your vitamin E, this is the wrapper of vitamin E. Here's vitamin E. These are the antioxidants. They're not the vitamin E. You want whole food complexes. You don't want synthetic vitamins, ever. I'm not taking synthetic anything, because we're very ignorant people, and nature can make supplements. We can't. You concentrate whole foods. <clears throat> These are antioxidants. So when they said, if you take a lot of synthetic E, it, it increases cancer. I've had patients ask, it was on the news. Is that true? Yes. There's the cancer fraction. When you take a ton of this one, you cannibalize that one. The tocopherols are the wrapper. That's the E molecule. Ascorbic acid is the wrapper. Vitamin C is on the inside. It's the antioxidant. 
Next. <clears throat> Cleaning out people's arteries. This is, I have a, a number of scans on the people that wanted to pay. This is 1,500 bucks. <clears throat> it's a ton of radiation. It's a 64 sliced EBT scan on your heart. The patients that got the clotting panel done, which you'll see here, we put the right combination together. That's what their scores look like. Zero, 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 zero. <clears throat> the doctors have freaked out at my scans. In fact, we've never had a scan with over a 10% blockage when they were done cleaning up their arteries. <clears throat> Next. This guy was in the waiting room. You know, Dad, this is Larry's, the banker we dealt with 100 years ago. <clears throat> the banker that helped me get in practice, I came around and saved his life years later, and he was in the waiting room. So I see you're doing a lecture on the heart. Please use my file. This is one of the senior vice presidents at Morgan Stanley. He had a 64 slice CT scan on his heart when I was through. He had a zero. The head internist at Beaumont said, this is impossible. You can't have a zero. His cholesterol is 339. His triglycerides are 392. His HDL is 48. His LDL is 213. His C-reactive protein, his ratio is terrible. And we put him on a bunch of enzymes. Homocysteine, normal. That's a clotting. We had a lot of inflammation in his body. Some enzymes and some buckwheat, and he got a zero. Next. <clears throat> I believe Bob Probert's wife's best friend is a patient. That's the panel that I told Mrs. Probert to give her kids because you're one out of, you have, she had four kids. Two of those kids are going to carry what happened to him. His dad dropped dead at 41, standing in Windsor. He dropped dead standing in a boat at 45. Two of those four kids are going to drop dead in their 40s if you don't run that panel, and that's the genetic part. You can pick up a sheet, and you want to get it run, bring in your numbers. We'll show you how your combination. Now, number one, now the literature says, I've had my parents doing this forever, fish oil shuts off the Alzheimer's gene. They just said that, that's the latest thing they just said. Fish oil actually, three fish meals a week cut Alzheimer's 60%. And most of the doctors today will not eat fish. And after this uh, blowout at the, uh, the reactor, you better know where you're getting your fish oil from. You don't get cheap oils out there. And a lot of people go to Costco and get it out of the barrel. You do not want the bar oil out of the barrel at all. I don't even think you want, you know what they, you know how they stimulated the, the economy in the Gulf? You know what the government did? Went and bought up all the seafood in the Gulf and sent it to the military over in Afghanistan and Iran. That's what we sent to the military. That's how we stimulated the economy. Not only are these boys full of chemicals and depleted uranium, they're getting toxic seafood served to them to help out. This country's getting stranger by the day. Fish oil, you got quality fish oil, I take it every day. You keep that great, great, significantly, if you have low levels of DHA, EPA, significantly greater risk for coronary heart disease, fatal ischemic events, you want good oils in your diet. You don't, you, and I'm here to tell you, those girls with their skin look that good before they went to Florida. She's got some very handsome boys and girls and good, they look very healthy. When I have to hardcore rebuilding the brain stuff, this is when I got when the, my real vacant brains. I have to use this on some hardcore mental type brain conditions. It, this gets the job done quickly. Next. <clears throat> A lot of different oils for different kinds. I take this little combination here. Beauty and brains. I could use the brains and I've given up on the beauty, so who cares? <clears throat> That's what makes your skin glow. Number two, a clotting problem, fibrinogen. If you take the right oils, most heart attacks are known to be due to acute thrombosis or the sudden formation of a blood clot. Fibrinogen will follow the oils. You can do that one with the slippery oils. 
C-reactive protein. This is you. Now, you can watch The Secret History of the Essential Fatty Acids for more information on that. This is the two eyes, infection and inflammation. Our diets are full of inflammation because it's got all the wrong oils in it. And infection, that's another thing. You see this, people break a leg, they got hepatitis, they have uh, pneumonia. This, will go, and this is much more dangerous than any cholesterol thing. <clears throat> that kind of has, has to be sorted out where that's coming from because that'll plug you up quickly. <clears throat> Homocysteine, it's kind of funny that uh, this is a very sneaky clotting factor. High homocysteine levels. Homocysteine is pretty sneaky because it won't raise your blood pressure in the literature. It'll kind of sneak up on you. Elevated homocysteine is a classic sign. A lot of doctors are working with this with these MTHFR genetic scans. I know Dr. Brownstein's doing a lot of work with this personally. Next. <clears throat> Next. <laughs> uh, uh, the electronic age. Amy sent me a message. I got it. <clears throat> now, like I said, my son's best friend, this is a short thing from the last lecture, my son's best friend's dad croaked at Planet Fitness. He's an anesthetist. He's 56 years old. His whole family works in the hospitals, and every man has died before they're 60. So this kid's all distraught. He hangs out at my house. So my wife said, bring home that clotting panel so Jack can give this to his mother, who's a nurse, and run this on his son. So I brought this home, gave it to Jack. He's 18 years, 19 years old. I, to save face for his physician, I cut her last name off. Her name's Carolyn. So his homocysteine level is completely out of range. That's what killed every man in the family before they hit 60. They all work in the hospitals. They're all dead. He's completely distraught. And with this high level, our friend, our MD, Carolyn, wrote perfect at the bottom. Just perfect. This kid came to the office, looked at the clotting board. We talked about it. Came in on a weekend for him, showed him what to do. He said, you've changed my entire view. I grew up in a medical family. My entire family's dead because of this? Yes. Why didn't anybody treat it? Because there's no pharmaceuticals, Jack. There's no pharmaceuticals for this. They sacrificed your family in the altar because there's no drugs for it. He's disturbed. <clears throat> Next, lipoprotein A. I'm going to give you a clue about lipoprotein A. It's the clotting factor that hurts after the bypass. It's very unique. It still continues to hurt. <clears throat> I've had young people, one of my staff members, my wild back staff member, uh, Kelly is my wild back staff member, the other Kelly. She's waving her hand in the corner. Hers is 125. She threw a clot in the office uh, about two summers ago. She ran out clutching her chest. Her dad had a bypass and had his grafts completely plugged up in six months. They had to drill the graft open after the bypass because it plugged up within six months. These are all over the place. They're missed constantly. I have a ton of these. Lipoprotein A is 10 times worse than LDL. This is strictly genetic. There's no drugs for this. There's no diet. There's no exercise. Nothing. You have to know how to handle it nutritionally. Next. <clears throat> Hockey friend. <clears throat> Wife said, my husband's got a bad family history. They've all had blockages in his family. Can you do something? I gave him the genetic clotting factor. And <clears throat> these are his numbers. His cholesterol is 190, HDL 72, his triglycerides are 40, LDL is 110. I said, blank, I want you to run this test because your wife's concerned about your family history. <clears throat> Boy Scout's honor, I'm not a Boy Scout. He said, I don't need you, I have a Beaumont doctor. <laughs> I've been on Lipitor for 20 years. These are my numbers. We ended up playing hockey together. 
we won the league together. He played on defense. I'm a forward. After no, I'm I'm 75 games into the winter spring league. My breathing right now. I could go jogging right now and run a long ways, not running. We play tough hockey. <clears throat> Two days after we won the league, he flunks a treadmill test at 48 and has a triple bypass with those numbers. So he had to come in with his tail tucked between his legs. I'm ready to run that test now that I have a zipper in my chest. His lipoprotein A was out of range. He called his father. His father had a bypass at the same age, at 46. He's 48. His dad's was 103. Kelly, what's your lipoprotein A? 125. One of my staff members has this. And she saved her life already. See, Kelly, that's why you were sent to my office. So that I could find your ring and save your life. And Kelly got engaged this weekend, and this morning she lost her engagement ring. <laughs> <clears throat> and she went through the toilets, she went through the vents, she went through the garbage cans, she crawled through the garbage, she was panicked. And I found it on a little shelf and just put it in my pocket. <laughs> I, only, I, I gave it to you five minutes after I found it. And it was an adventurous morning for Kelly. You almost had another heart attack from the lipoprotein A. It was a stressful morning for Kelly. <clears throat> this was a very pleasant gal from Canada. <clears throat> Next, short of breath, going up a flight of stairs. Was that her? Yes, 465. She was a warrior. She never let this stop her. I call the stairs the Albanian treadmill. I get short of breath going up one flight of stairs. Carry a bunch of heavy things, see how many stairs you can get up. If your heart's plugged up, you won't get up three flights of stairs with your arms busy. Next. <clears throat> Within two months, she can go up the stairs. Next, I used a different combination on her. She tested a little differently. This lady's a warrior. She's a great patient. She would have came here in a second if I would have asked her, but she's a biz, she's a warrior. Peripheral artery disease, had a femoral popliteal bypass surgery in the right leg due to 100% blockage. Now the artificial artery is blocked and has a 90% blockage in her left leg. Homocysteine, she's on one, two, three, four, five, six drugs. It took I hit everything on her because she's going to lose her legs. They're going to, she's at risk of losing her legs. One, two, three, four, five. On all these six medications, she just keeps plugging up because there's no drugs for it. Next. <clears throat> Two months later, legs feel 50% better. Patient walking, toes not purple. One year, <clears throat> the blockage in her original femoral artery is now open. The bypass artery is blocked because that will do that. The patient now has a pulse in her feet. And MD stated she is no longer at risk of losing her legs or feet. She worked every day like this, and she's a warrior. Now, isn't it funny that these doctors have never contacted me? Ever? Not one time? How did you do this? They have no interest in, doing, in this, and this is easy to do. No interest? I clean out my arteries for eight weeks before hockey every season. And there's a reason for that. Next. <clears throat> Got to learn to use your enzymes intelligently. Enzymes are huge. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> I've had to play excess cholesterol when I don't want to because I had a guy named Larry who's going to see this in the waiting room. I had to lower his cholesterol against my will because so he could get a license to drive a dump truck. They weren't going to give him a license to drive a dump truck with perfect numbers because not one of them knows how to read the ratio. So I lowered it against my will so he could get his dump truck license. You don't turn your, don't lose your freedoms. You're losing your freedoms. <clears throat> They're slowly sneaking your freedoms away. Drive a dump truck for Pete's sakes. You can drink alcohol and fly a plane and he can't drive a dump truck. <laughs> Niacin number six. Let's keep going. Uh, 
<clears throat> the Lancet, the number one journal in the world, pretty much, said the 71 to 93 year olds showed that death from all causes increased as cholesterol levels fell. That's not what that guy says on TV. What does this mean for you? For most older people, cholesterol levels begin to fall after 70 to 75. Yet the researchers were astounded to find that the earlier and faster cholesterol levels fall after age 71, the greater the risk of death from all causes. How come they don't tell you this stuff on the television? <clears throat> Those with the higher cholesterol levels at this age were healthier and exhibited stronger health status, including less anemia and better strength. In other words, if cholesterol levels fall in older people, they become frail and weak. How weak was uh, your father, Herschel? 15 medications. And he complained about the doctor. We had, he was a great guy, him and his wife. We had a lot of laughs, didn't we? we I made him laugh, him and Florence. <clears throat> Irv's got an open door right now. <clears throat> I wish he could you know, hear this, because she understands that. Florence wasn't doing too good with her memory. So here I got these two 80-year-olds sitting in the office, and I asked, all right, Florence, we're going to test your memory. Who is your first boyfriend? Irv. And the moment she said Irv, the look on his face, he got angry immediately. That guy, he was a musician. He drank. He was, yeah, I said he was wilder than you. She had more fun with Irv than you. <clears throat> so to watch jealousy in their 80s, we, I could always get under his fingernail if I brought up Irv, whoever Irv is. It was so funny. So, dad, stand up. This is your moment. I want you to stand up. My dad's 85. He's got some tough legs in this life. He has been suffer of a childhood disease. It really was tough on his legs. So I want you to look at the color of him at 85. This is how my family cleans out their arteries. <clears throat> Just like that. Go ahead and sit. All right, that's enough. You're hogging the show. That's enough. You can sit down now. You're hogging the show. Yes. My, <clears throat> now, my dad comes in. His cholesterol, this was a few years back, was 250. His triglycerides were 260. His HDL was 40. His LDL was about 170, and his glucose was about 100. So I have a ton of men that come in like this with these numbers. Why are my numbers like this? And I have to break the news to them that you're a lazy, fat, salaried white guy. You never did an honest day's work in your life. <laughs> you eat crap all day and you sit and watch the foreigners cut the lawn. You don't get out of the car to open a garage door, and you've never got up to change the channel on the TV, and you sprint back and forth to the refrigerator, and that's what you call your exercise. So I've told this, all his friends, my dad's cheap, and he came from Ford, he's that retired Ford Motor Company guy, and his friends are just as cheap. So when you're really cheap and you have this insurance, his friends were told, you're diseased. These are diseases. So they're on the beta blockers and the Lipitor and the Nexium and the calcium channel blockers, and they're all dead. I, try, I told my dad for 30 years, this isn't a disease. This is a lazy, fat, salaried white guy. That's a disease. So here my dad sits. I've kept his arteries open and his blood slippery and his heart relaxed. And he gets to go to funeral after funeral after funeral with these numbers. And he's in perfectly, and he ran the tread off a treadmill one time, and a, a knee replacement on one leg, polio from childhood in the other leg, and he still ran the tread off a treadmill with two bad legs in front of the doctor at Garden City. And they were amazed with those numbers. True or false? True. Cut Brad out of the will and put me in his half. <laughs> hmm. Charlotte, 
This is your moment. Look at this. I told Charlotte, I should put you, how many years have you been a patient? Today, I've been your patient for 24 years and 11 months. <laughs> she said, I take a total of 45 supplements a day. We're, so, we're all, you know, us healthy people are supplement junkies. She takes 45 a day. She just told me that. I didn't know that. So this is her numbers at 78. When she brought her blood test in. Cholesterol is 217. Her HDL is 122 for good cholesterol. Mine's 58, playing hockey twice a week. Triglycerides are 44. LDL is 86. Her ratio is 1.8. Her glucose is 88. <clears throat> Number is perfect. I said, Charlotte, I said, I should put you at my lecture. She said, put me at the lecture. These, <clears throat> she has been an easy patient all these years. She's part of the raging grannies, <laughs> right? Yeah. Anything, anything got you guys all fired up this week? Yeah. We're going, to Oak Ridge. going to Oak Ridge, Tennessee? Yeah. They've protested everywhere. How many of you go protest at Oak Ridge? It's a nuclear plant, right? Oak Ridge nuclear plant. They're going to fire up everybody in Oak Ridge this weekend. They're trying to build a new one. They want to build a new one. She has been, she's one of my Detroit warriors. Told you I'd use your lecture. Next. I got to get going here. <clears throat> Low HDL. Weight loss, how to increase your HDL, niacin exercise, cutting out carbohydrates, low glycemic foods, weight loss. Next, excess triglycerides and LDL. Now, to make a long story short, you're eating too many carbs. Cut out your carbs, cut out your carbs, your breads, your grains, your, your wheat, your rice, your high fructose corn syrup. Don't make this a disease. <clears throat> when it cuts you off the meat and vegetables, you started eating carbs, you're a mess. You all got to cut out your carbohydrates. Next, <clears throat> 49-year-old carb addict, two, 839 triglycerides, 313 cholesterol, terrible ratio, 267 glucose. Cutting out his carbs, <clears throat> three weeks, 204, 146 triglycerides from 839 to 95. <clears throat> glucose from 267 to 150 in those three supplements. Next, <clears throat> excess insulin, cut out your carbs. Don't make this complicated. You're eating too much bread, you're eating too much cereal, you're eating too much fruit. You gotta watch that. <clears throat> High glucose, again, you're eating too many carbs. You could say this over and over and over. You're carbohydrate addicts because the TV says stop eating fat. So then you stop eating protein and then you go to the fruits and the carbs and your carb addicts. Mercola tried to go vegetarian with his body system and he had to stop when his triglycerides hit what? 3,000. It's on his website. Next. <clears throat> I have two hypertensive parents. I keep their arteries relaxed, I keep them in the sun, I keep their arteries open. They do not do medications. Is that what's best for you? That's what I've done with my, my parents. There's two articles about hypertension on the wall somewhere, right? One on that side, one on that side. At the end, you look at that because that's the articles I show my, I think this is really oversold. Get them fatter, get them lazier, get them less active, make them eat a bunch of carbs, and try to get their blood pressure lower than it was before. It's ridiculous. Next, number 13 out of 17, vitamin D. Vitamin D, you got to get in the sun because if you don't, your cholesterol goes up. If you get in the sun, your vitamin D goes up. So when they told you to stay out of the sun, they drove your cholesterol up. So telling you to stay, they told the women, if you want to do one thing to prevent breast cancer, get in the sun. What did your doctor tell you to do for the last 30 years? Yeah. Stay out of the sun, you all got breast cancer, and then he put you on estrogen. It's terrible. It's, it's, it's hopeless. Save yourself because this world is sliding south. The darker you are, every black person can come in, they're 90 pounds. They can't get their blood pressure under control. Of course you can't because you're dark and there's no sun. So they want beta blockers and water pills, then they turn diabetic. 
my two parents, very simple. You're never allowed to take a beta blocker, a water pill, cholesterol blocking medication, or a GERD pill, Nexium Prolosec Pepsid. You can't kill your digestion. The other two will turn you into a diabetic, and the cholesterol will suck the fat out of your brain because your brain's half fat and cholesterol. Don't suck the cholesterol and fat out of your brain. You're going to be running around in a nursing home with a t-shirt on thinking you're Napoleon without <laughs> pants on. You don't want to do that. Or maybe some of you are just faking that. <clears throat> arginine, a nitric oxide dilator, a Viagra, a great blood pressure pill. I got a lot of folks on, helps relax the arteries and raise nitric oxide levels. <clears throat> Next, same thing, a sports pill. <clears throat> this is your, your male Viagra pill. Again, we're back to nitric oxide, relaxes the arteries, great for athletes. A great pill for that. Good. Next. <clears throat> Estrogen. What was, was it this week? I said to my family, look, it was on ABC News. Guess what the news was on ABC? We're rethinking estrogen. It's good again. So it's been bad. Then it's been good. Then it was bad. I always tell you when it's good. Now it was bad. This is the sixth time. Now it's good again. So we're back to estrogen. The fact that it has clots and et cetera, et cetera, plugs up everything. A lot of problems with cancer and clots. <clears throat> Brussels sprouts, broccoli. I took two of those a day to keep my estrogen levels down. And just before I left, I had a guy with high PSA. He's down to two. That guy that I had, wasn't that good? And that's all he did. Clear up the estrogen out of your system. Next. <clears throat> this is the extent of my greens. This goes in my protein shake in the morning. The grass, barley, wheat, oat, alfalfa, broccoli, cow. I'm not going to eat any of these things. <laughs> <I'm not> gonna... <clears throat> I take a, a healthy scoop of this green, nasty stuff. I mix it with my chocolate, my SP Complete. I stick some IAG in there. <clears throat> a lot of SP Complete and water. That's my breakfast. I want to, and I take all my supplements in the morning that are my morning pills. I take stuff throughout the day. And <clears throat> that's it for the greens for the day. My detox pathways are working well. <clears throat> Andrew, pause. What are the men like today? You think the women are bad. They're depressed, they're pessimistic, they're crabby, they, <clears throat> they have weakness, they're miserable, they sit in the corners. They're male menopause, low T. Male menopause, no libido, they're fat around the middle, they have insulin resistance, erectile dysfunction, prostate symptoms, trouble with their blood sugar, low testosterone is a risk factor for heart disease by itself. It's an independent risk factor. Low testosterone by itself could give you a heart attack. That's very important and it's in the literature. <clears throat> a lot of things for men. Andropause, menopause, estrogen reduced, testosterone reduced, body fat increase, body fat increase, biological status decrease, decrease osteoporosis, osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease increase, increase, breast cancer up, prostate cancer up. Next. <clears throat> Great stuff for men. You know, I, I enjoy taking extra things at 53 year old, 53 because there's a lot of things to make guys feel strong. And you know, I'm in a tough league and it's kind of fun to, the guys that are cooking, I like to run over. The guys that are with the nails and stuff done. <clears throat> Women's support, men's support. <clears throat> Great, guys feel sturdy on this. They do very well on this. Call the office for details. Next, vitamin K, vitamin K. <clears throat> I've had my mother on vitamin K specifically for arterial calcification. <clears throat> it helps keep arteries more resilient. I enjoy my chlorophyll pearls. That's another one of my greens. My vegetables are my nitro greens, my cruciferous complex, and my chlorophyll. I want healthy blood and a lot of greens. <clears throat> Good. 
heart support, <clears throat> and there's, this con there's a condition next called beriberi. <clears throat> Doctors don't know what beriberi is, so Bruce West explained it. Next. <clears throat> the heart starts to fail. Beriberi is missed by the doctor in the new diagnosis of congestive heart failure. It's a classic vitamin B deficiency. Nearly naturally, all drugs to treat the heart will fail because a vitamin B deficiency is the real cause. That's called beriberi. Brain problems, irritability, forgetfulness, memory loss. The most common names are dementia, ataxia, neuropathy, essential tremor. Memory loss from beriberi can be differentiated from true dementia or Alzheimer's. With beriberi, they will have a profound recent memory loss with well-maintained past memory. The sugar, sweets, carbs, candy, pop, booze, exercise sucks the thiamine out of people. <clears throat> so you see edema, enlarged hearts, high blood pressure, the funny beating hearts. If my staff could tell you what people's heart beats like today, it's terrible. This is the people that collapsed at the marathon. Their hearts went out of rhythm. <clears throat> you gotta use whole food complexes for this. This is, the, this is all the pacemaker men. Their hearts are slowing down. They're beating irregular. You can only get this from food. You can't get it any other way. <clears throat> Peripheral neuropathy and numbness to the legs and feet. If I had you guys check each other's pulse in this crowd, you'd find, I'll bet you I could get 30% of you in this crowd to fail this test. How sturdy is your heart? The <clears throat> phony sugars, the aspartame, NutraSweet, you don't, you know, I've had some really sick people on Diet Coke and Diet Pop and Diet This and Diet That. Really sick people. I've had people whose MS disappeared when they stopped seven Diet Cokes a day as they think nothing of drinking six or seven Diet Cokes, Nutrisweet gum. I quit chewing. I have in my car for hockey bazooka bubble gum because it's the only one I found that does not have Nutrisweet in it anymore. <clears throat> now from the, what I talked about, yes, Kelly, these are the fingered ones. <clears throat> yeah, this is my, e, my Cataplex E2 and my Cataplex G is what I take for hockey games not to croak on the ice. Because I don't want to croak and have them paddle me back to life. <laughs> you know why I take my nitro pills before hockey? <clears throat> Sunday night, we played the top animal of the league. <clears throat> this guy's name is Joe D. I'm just going to use his last initial because he's an animal. He's mean. He's a serious hockey player. And we had a 3-3 three to -three tie going. And he's just an ornery, miserable dude. And with my E2 and my Cataplex G, you can, at the end of the game, it gets a difference. I got two goals in the last minute of play with a 3-3 three three tie Sunday night, and I stuffed him, and he's not happy, and he's going to try to hurt me the next game. <laughs> uh, I want to breathe better on the ice. It makes a big difference at the end of the game. This is the... The part three, this is the answer to the puzzle about what's happening in the sky. Then we discover as we're going further down the line that there are companies generating a, a genetically modified organisms, or seeds, uh, modified seed crops that are they're being engineered to resist the aluminum in the soil. And a lot of crops won't grow in that. And so now, after they've messed up the soil, all the farmers were going to have to go back and uh, buy seeds that have been yeah. genetically engineered to resist the aluminum that have been put into the soil. And all of a sudden, uh, mankind is completely dependent upon these uh, companies like Monsanto and other giant uh, agricultural firms. You can't even grow natural seeds anymore. And we're looking at that. And it's, a, it's a shocking thing, I hope. I hope we don't find that that's true, but all the arrows right now are pointing in that direction. The, the people who are in power control everything. They control the markets, they control us, and now they're even controlling the weather. And they can use that for warfare applications. The one thing that they cannot control is what God had originally made, and that's natural organic seeds 
This is called the Hegelian dialect. It's called problem, reaction, solution. The problem here is massive amounts of aluminum, things starting to die. The solution is company X that says, hey man, you're not getting yields on, on your crop. Everything's dying. But I got the solution. I got a seed that will grow in this environment. The only problem is now you have to start buying from me. We're a little concerned that maybe part of this agenda could be to kill off anything that's natural and organic and re-engineer it with aluminum resistant GMO seeds. Uh, many may know we just got back from a week of filming in Hawaii and uh, it was an incredible trip. A big concern for the people there is they're beginning to see softening of the coconut trees. But their concern is that these programs may again be part of a, uh, of a broader agenda to destroy anything that's natural and organic so that the corporate redesigned GMO foods might be the only thing, uh, only source of food for people. This was a commune in Maui that they went to. And they're saying, look at this. When we came here 20 years ago, everything was lush. They were pulling the stuff off the coconut trees. They ran hair analysis on the kids that have never been to a doctor and never left the island. And they were a train wreck. I'll show you where to watch this next. Now, Project Cloverleaf, did you, what in the world are they spraying is what you want to watch. I have special homework for the folks. Project, that's the, you can just YouTube, Google this. <clears throat> then, for some special homework, this is deep. Project Cloverleaf is going to take you deeper into this journey. It's going to take you to some surprising places. You might end up at an Air Force base where all this stuff's going on. The Internet's an amazing tool. <clears throat> I have patience. Okay, it's springtime. Get the minerals that I take at night. I take a shot of this in grape juice, just a splash. Take a cap to a, a, a gallon watering. I, I can see some patients out there that did this before. The brewers did this. Did you not do this before? They won. You had the best flowers. Kelly has done this with her flowers. Take a cap to that much water, the same minerals that I take. Watch what it does to your garden. It's very simple. <clears throat> cap to a gallon, water half the garden, don't water the other half. You watch what happens to the half of the garden that you watered with those minerals. You will not believe it. <clears throat> it will shock you. I went through that. Next. The Vegetarian Express <clears throat> is some wonderful people. They had some samples out there. They got some handouts. For the people that watched Revelation Chronicles with Steve Vale, this is his wife. They're, a good, they're good soldiers that do a lot of good things, so I let her stick her um, company out there. This is his wife, Connie. That's Bridget in the back. Bridget's had an incredible clot story with me. So if you want to know about dissolving the clots, Bridget has a personal story about that. Next. <clears throat> <clears throat> the website, next. This is a, the newsletter. Yes, there's a newsletter. I don't know anything about this. Sign up, you'll get your newsletter. There's a lot of people on it right now. There's a picture of my smiling, happy staff that I threatened them to smile for the picture. Did I get through all this in the nick of time? I was pushing time for this because it was a complicated subject. Now it's 9.33. I actually, is this the last one? Good. You got the website. I want to thank all of you for coming. I actually have to go on the ice by 10.15 tonight. Thank you all for coming. Uh, hopefully you learned some interesting things about the heart that can separate you from the herd. <laughs>